you can get pretty far with Rust using the Rust Playground or even just GitHub Actions if you really need to. Eventually though, you'll want to have Rust installed on your computer. Let's get Rust installed and then talk about setting up the right VS Code extensions and cargo subcommands so that you can have a productive Rust environment. To install Rust, we'll first install RustUp from rustup.rs. If you're coming from Node.js, RustUp is similar to NVM, except that it's an official Rust project, so you don't have to choose between RustUp and three other options like you do in JavaScript land. RustUp is installed via a curl command on Mac and Linux, so we'll grab a terminal window. In this case, I'm on a fresh M1 MacBook Pro and have opened the terminal app. On Windows, you can download the exe. After executing the curl command, we're met with a welcome to Rust message. I suggest reading this so you're aware of the various directories Rust will store configurations in. There's a directory for RustUp, a directory for Cargo, and a directory for any binaries we install via Cargo from crates.io, the Rust package registry. The message also lets us know which shell startup files it's going to modify to add the Cargo binaries directory to our path. This is what lets us have access to the binaries installed from crates.io when we type their names. We're given three options. One, proceed with the installation, to customize the installation, or cancel. We'll proceed with the default installation today. RustUp then sets the default toolchain to use the one that is most reasonable for your computer. I have an M1 Mac, so the toolchain that's being installed for me as my default toolchain is Stable, ARCH64, Apple, Darwin. This identifier includes the release channel and the target triple for your platform. Rust has three release channels, Stable, Beta, and Nightly. So what this means is that we're installing the latest stable Rust release for the M1 Mac. RustUp will download a series of components for this toolchain as well, which includes a series of tools that are useful for developing Rust. In this case, we've downloaded Cargo, the package manager, Clippy, the linter, comparable to ESLint, RustC, the Rust compiler, and Rust Format, the Rust code autoformatter, which is comparable to Prettier. We won't cover the full list of components today, and in fact, there are some that aren't listed here though it is worth knowing that you can choose to install more or fewer components if you want to save space on your computer or take advantage of different tools. After installing RustUp and our first version of Rust, we need to either run the source command that's printed out or open a new shell and a new terminal window so that we have access to the newly installed components. You can type rustc version and cargo version to ensure that you've installed Rust correctly. Now that we have Rust installed, we should also get set up with VS Code or your favorite editor of choice. Rust Analyzer is an editor extension that adds superpowers to your Rust development workflow. Rust Analyzer can write code for you, organize your imports at the top of the file, tell you where a problem is in your source code, and my favorite, show you the types of everything in your application using inlay hints. In VS Code, go to the extension store and pick Rust Analyzer. A short aside, there is an older extension called Rust, that used to be the recommended extension. These days, you should use Rust Analyzer instead and only Rust Analyzer. Disable the Rust extension if you've installed it previously as the two extensions can conflict if they're both enabled. I find two other extensions useful, although they are not required for working with Rust. One of them is the Crates extension for automatically checking the versions of dependencies in my cargo.toml, and the other is the even better toml extension for .toml syntax highlighting. Again, these are both very optional and you can choose to install them or not. It will not affect your experience. In addition to what we've already done, Cargo allows us to extend its behavior using binaries we install from crates.io. Here's a few that I use to make my life easier. If you're used to using npm install or yarn add to add dependencies to your package JSON, you'll wanna make sure you install Cargo Edit, which adds the add, remove, and upgrade subcommands, as well as the Cargo set version subcommand. Particularly notable for Cargo Edit, is that it's on track to be included in Cargo itself at some point. So expect to see that come with the default installation of Cargo at some point in the future. Cargo Watch adds the ability to watch your files and recompile when something changes in your project. The most awesome part of this plugin is the ability to chain multiple commands. For example, whenever a change is made, you could type check using Cargo Check, and if that succeeds, run Cargo Test or Cargo Run, like this. Cargo Outdated will give you a bunch of information about the dependencies in your project, and which versions are currently available. Now, I've just created this project that we're in right here, so Cargo Outdated tells me everything is up to date. We have a number of different scaffolding tools in the JavaScript ecosystem. So as a bonus, let's cover a scaffolding tool in the Rust ecosystem. Cargo Generate is a tool that will help you get up and running quickly by leveraging a pre-existing Git repository as a template. I use this quite often for the Rust Adventure repos, 
so that somebody who takes, say, the serverless course can start up a new project without having to manually get all the dependencies, because when you're starting out, you might not know them. This allows me and my students to get up and running quickly with a verified correct version of a running function that they can then use and deploy to make sure that their workflow works for them. Today, we've installed Rust, installed Rust Analyzer into VS Code, and also added a few useful helpers to Cargo. As a next step, you could either get started by writing some more Rust code or head over to crates.io or lib.rs to find more subcommands that you might enjoy using.